Hello, my name is Julia Simpson Urutia. I am, have been a professor, a teacher here at Fresno City College for many years, since 2006. Um, I teach English writing and reading, and now I am putting all my adjunct hours into the Writing and Reading Center, where I am a supervisor. When I teach my classes, I use my book, The Red Sea Bride, which I wrote under a pseudonym. I would like to read from The Red Sea Bride in a chapter about my ex-husband's, my ex-Saudi husband's grandmother, Zainab. Something about Zainab's diminishing sight and accumulation of years, Mama Johara said, enhanced a sporadic gift Zainab had possessed since childhood. Having reached the other end of her life, she was once again seeing jinn, creatures made of smokeless fire, whose existence is, is acknowledged in the Quran. Sometimes Zainab would admonish an invisible presence before her. Those who overheard her knew by what she said that she spoke to a jinni. She had been harassed by jinn as a child. In vast old age, when they accosted her again, she was ready for them. When grandmother Zainab didn't address herself to the unseen, she blessed her family members and remembered her manners. The hallmark of Arabian etiquette is hospitality, and Grandmother Zainab was, even prone and feeble, an example for all younger generations. I was introduced to her as the new wife of one of her youngest grandsons. This is Malik's wife, Mam Johara told her mother in a raised voice, repeating and emphasizing our names, hoping her mother heard and understood. Malik, he married a girl from America, and now she's here. This is Malik's wife. Her name is Sylvia. That's my pseudonym. Zainab's lips slowly stretched over her wasted face into a beautiful smile. The withered facial structure had pleasing lines of symmetry. Ahlan, ahlan, she said, extending her hand blindly into the air to grasp mine like a flag of acceptance pitched slightly askew. Then in simple Arabic, she added, you are most welcome here. We are so happy to have you with us. May Allah bless you. I pulled the gnarled fingers into my palm and held them there long enough to say shukran. Thank you. I could see that she had been a handsome woman in these last years of her life when she had to be carried everywhere. Even Zainab recognized she had been remarkable. Once she was asked, of all your daughters, who was the most beautiful? Zainab thought long and then replied solemnly, of all my daughters, I was the most beautiful. Girls are said to mature early in subtropical climates. For that reason, and because Muslim families used to think, before the need for university educations, that daughters were best off safely married, Zainab took her first husband when she was 12 or 13. On the morning of her first wedding, Zainab was sent by her mother to buy coal at the market. When the girl returned home, she found decorations strung upon the house, delicious smells wafting from the kitchen, and relatives arriving. The females had put on their ceremonial white dresses trimmed with gold buttons. Zainab's wedding attire had been laid out for her, and her bath was being drawn. It was a surprise wedding party. Her husband had met her, but not she him, because by tradition, when he had come to ask for her hand, she had been led in front of her suitor with her eyes squeezed shut. She could have peeked had she wished. Zainab's six marriages all ended in the husband's death or divorce, and she outlived every spouse. She was a long distance walker who ended up having families descended from several husbands. To visit them all, she traversed Jeddah on foot, sometimes walking from one end to the other twice a day. That's the end of that excerpt. This book is available through Amazon and Barnes and Nobles.